Uh, human eyes are interesting. They're about the size and shape of a golf ball. And most of the human eye is, is a hollow structure. Um, when you look at an eye, there are two structures in it that bend light, two things that bend light. The first is the, the clear cover on the front of the eye, which is the cornea. And it's kind of like, it's the thing you see out through. It's the thing that lets light in. And it is clear, and it has unique properties. And I think the best way to compare it is it's like either the lens on your camera that lets light in, or it's like the windshield on your car. It's the thing that light hits first as it comes to the car, and it's the thing that lets light come in. <clears throat> and it's important because 75% of the eye's light bending capacity exists in that clear cornea. That's where, that's where the action is, mostly. Um, corneas have unique properties, which we'll discuss a little later, that make them uh, different than other tissues in your body. Right inside that clear cornea, there's, a, there's actually a fluid-filled space where the fluid's being produced and constantly being filtered outside the eye. If the filter breaks down and the pressure in the eye rises, because it will, uh, then, then your pressure goes up and you get something called glaucoma that can damage your vision. And uh, regularly we see people who have not had their eyes examined, or sometimes unfortunately who have, who come in, and I would say at least once or twice a month, we'll find someone who comes in wanting laser vision correction who has glaucoma and doesn't even know it. And the danger with that disease is that you don't know you have a problem unless you get your eyes checked regularly. Oftentimes people come in and they just fell into the category where in their mid-40s, for the first time in their life, they can't see to read. But they've never had their eyes checked before because they could always see. Um, that's not a good thing to wait till you're in your mid-40s to get your eyes checked for the first time. Because oftentimes we'll find something going on with those folks. So you want to get your eyes checked occasionally, even if you have perfect vision. You want to have that done occasionally. Anyway, right behind that structure there is a flat, planar structure that has a hole in the middle of it, and that hole we call the pupil. That planar structure that has color to it we call the iris. And the iris has a number of things associated with it that make it unique. It has two muscles, one that pulls the pupil down and constricts it under conditions of bright light. Some drugs do the same thing. They make the pupil pinpoint in size. And there's another muscle that pulls the pupil open and dilates it so that it lets more light in. Presumably, the function of the dilator muscle is to let more light in when you're in a darkened condition so you can see what's coming from the side to eat you so that you get out of the way before it gets there. Okay. But it also serves us for night driving and other things like that. And pupil size has some something to do with the way people see and how clearly they see. And it's had a lot of press with laser vision correction, some of which is true, some of which is not. But those two muscles control the size of the pupil. Okay. Um, the other thing that it does is it lets certain amounts of light in that allow you to see under certain conditions. Now, we want light to get through that pupil so that it gets to the back of the eye, because in the back of the eye there's a very thin nerve structure called retina, which covers the entire inner wall of the eye. The eye's kind of like a fish fishbowl. You look inside and then all around the inside there's this retina, and it has thousands of little nerve fibers within it that pick up light, and they send that light impulse to the brain down a conduit called the optic nerve. The optic nerve's in the back of the eye right back here, and it's about the size and the shape of the, this end of my pen. It's about that long and it's about that big around. And within that nerve fiber, or within that optic nerve, there are 1,100,000 nerve fibers approximately in each eye sending light impulses into your brain. When we look in the back of your eye as an eye doctor and look back there to see the structures that are back there, we're actually looking at nervous tissue that's part of your brain. So a good eye exam with a, with a look at the back is actually looking at your brain. Come on in, look. And it's the, it's the only way we can get a real good look back there. It's a lot easier than the neurosurgeons look where they drill a hole in your head to look at your brain. It tells us a lot about your neurologic health. The vessels that come into the eye from the, from the brain also are about the same caliber and diameter as the vessels that feed all your major organs. So it tells us a lot about your vascular health when we look back there. And almost every, eye, every, every systemic disease you can name has an eye manifestation. Okay. So eyes tell you a lot. 
The other structure in the eye that has something to do with <coughs> the way light bends is the crystalline lens. The lens inside the eye sits right behind the iris. And it's a flexible structure. It moves up and down, in and out. Okay? The lens is responsible for about 25% of the eye's ability to bend light. Now remember, 75% is in the cornea, 25% is in the lens. The lens, though, is unique. The cornea doesn't bend, but the lens does. When you're born, as a little child, or when you're just after you're born, the lens is actually, uh, more or less, it's like a saran wrap baggie that's full of these lens proteins. When you're, when you're born, though, those proteins are liquid. It's like a baggie full of water. It's attached to the eye wall through a series of little, they look like trampoline wires. They go all the way around. They're called zonules, but that doesn't matter. What really matters is they're attached to a muscle. And when a little kid wants to see something up close, all they do is hold it here. That muscle constricts, pulls in, okay? And the process of that muscle pulling in causes that, those zonules to relax. They become flaccid or weak. And that weakening allows the lens to round up like a ball because its natural shape, the shape it wants to assume, is like a ball. And the more round it gets, the closer little kids can hold things to their nose and see them clearly. And it drives their mothers crazy. Because just doing this to look at my fingers to show you that gave me a little pain right here. Okay? And so when mom holds things that close, it makes her forehead ache and she thinks it must make that poor little kid doesn't know what they're doing. But they don't care. They can't feel anything. It doesn't matter to them. They can hold things here all day, and it makes no difference at all. Because without any effort at all, that lens becomes a ball, and they can hold it here. Now, something happens. About the age of eight, the proteins within that saran wrap baggie, that lens capsule, as they call it, begin to stiffen. And from the age of eight till the age of about 70, they continue to stiffen and they get a little stiffer with each passing year. When it bites you, it's somewhere between your 38th and 48th birthday. Because within the range you need to do your near work, that's about the time you begin to notice that what used to be good here is a little better there. Okay? And, and in bright light, it's okay up here. When you're tired, it's not okay even here. If you're trying to read in bed at night, and you're doing this all your life, you're not doing it anymore. Okay and you're squinting and you're putting in eye drops and you can't do it anymore. And you wake up in the morning and you go to read the stock page and you can't do it and you go you feel looking for bright light near the window so you can see the stock page close. And that's all part of the process of this lens protein mass stiffening.